On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are talking all about the brand new Star Trek Picard trailer, as well as Prodigy 108, Time Amuck, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen in on the continuing Star Trek conversation that the two lifelong friends have been having since they were six years old. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. Dave. How Somebody. you doing today, bud? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I threw my back out, which is weird. Mm -hmm. I, you're the one with the back problems. Yeah, I'm, I was about I'm to say welcome to my everyday. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, not, I'm normally the spry flexible fellow you know that's yeah. how everyone thinks of me yeah no that's not but okay <laughs> <laughs> you live your truth buddy i will i will <laughs> but it's a pretty pretty shitty uh feeling mm -hmm. uh, but you know what it's not a shitty feeling um a new picard trailer oh, my friend i was gonna say six dollar pizza from walmart Mm, that is also not a shitty feeling. Mm. I mean, later, later, it's a shitty feeling. Depends on how much you eat at the one time. The entire thing, as is written in the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was a Catholic edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, uh, what, do you, what do you think? They, so, we got a new car trailer. Mm -hmm. I guess it was this part of... Uh, you know, some sort of big event, or was this just a drop? As far as I know, it was just a drop, but I'm not a good fan. I don't keep up with, like, you know, the other day someone was like, it's 1701 day, it's official 1701 day, and I'm like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, that people add little, like, geek culture holidays to the calendar every year, and I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know most of them. Yeah, I don't, like, I, I'm, I'm aware of first contact day. Yeah. And usually about midway to the end of the day, somewhere in there, I remember, oh, yeah, this is the day the Star Trek premiered back in September. Uh, that's mm -hmm. fine. That's fine. I, 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 I'm horrible at that kind of stuff. Yeah, same. I, I'm, I'm much worse than you. The reason I asked you is because you normally know these things <laughs> more than I do. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we, well, we got a new car trailer. It's, it's a lot more in it than in the previous uh, trailer. It, well, it's a little, it's a lot more flashes of things and a little less contiguous. Like here's the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, just a ton of flashes of like what's going on in their future, what's going on in their past. Um, if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. It's pretty neat. Or we'll put a link in the, um, link in the show notes uh to check it out if you like it looks like this time travel thing is happening for sure mm -hmm. they're in some sort of dark universe uh that is different than theirs q says the road not taken mm -hmm. so when he said that right around when he said that they showed a picture of the enterprise uh in the middle of a battle well, uh, like a painting yes but that enterprise looks like a splintered into different like frames and looks like different parts different ships because there's a part of the Seltzer section, where I swear it looks like the Enterprise E. Like, it looks like it has been divided and is like splintered off. Interesting. That's to in me. That painting? Yeah. Interesting. It, to me, it just looked like it was in battle, but I haven't freeze framed and tried to look at it closely. That's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I. So, so based on that picture. I thought this was going to be like, you know, the effects of something he had done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or something they had done on the, on the, on the Enterprise D. Yeah. But then it looks like the origins of this, whatever this different future is, happened sometime in 2024, they're saying. Mm-hmm. And then they've got like some Vulcans meeting a child in the woods and uh, mind, mind melding. melding. Yeah. Yeah. And Q giving like some sort of what looks like a blue bullet to I would assume one of Song's ancestors, right? Yeah. So we've got uh, an appearance by Brent Spiner as what appears to be one of Song's ancestors. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's a lot going on here, <laughs> and um, I, you know, it all sounds super interesting. Like it's all like things I'd like to see in an episode of Star Trek, but I, I don't know. I just I'm so. I'm hung up on Picard because I think it's such a neat thing that we've, we're getting 
Patrick Stewart back for these these seasons and mm-hmm. you know they play in three seasons the, but but I want them to like I just it, it has the same problem that Discovery has where it's like when you when you commit to this overarching plot in Star Trek like that idea better be good and I just don't know yet if this idea is good or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean mm-hmm. you know we, we just don't know but yeah for sure I mean I, I'm still excited for it I'm really interested to see what they're doing with uh, the enemy within reference. I don't know if you noticed that. There's uh, the shot where Seven is looking into the hexagon mirror and like touching her face. It's almost exactly the same shot as Kurt when he's transported in the enemy within, and he there's a double a transporter double that's evil, and one of them okay. is all evil and one of them is all I guess good. Even though like you need both to survive. So uh, in that right. episode, Bad Kurt gets scratched by Yeoman Rand, and he looks in this like hexagon mirror and t- touches mm-hmm. his face, and it's almost the exact same shot as Seven looking in that mirror, touching her face where her implant used to be. That's cool. That's real cool. So there, it, I mean, I assume it's just a you know this is a dark timeline with uh, you know the enemy within could be whatever that Vulcan is putting inside of that kid, or you know just speaking to our darker natures you know hmm that's interesting i mean it also could just be a visual callback um like uh, here's a classic star trek shot let's let's replicate it or you're right it could have deeper meaning here hmm. i would hope so <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to reference just for reference sake oh you know i do i do but yeah you do <laughs> i do prefer to have like deeper implications Sure, sure, yeah. Um, we get a lot of the Borg Queen mm-hmm. in this episode. There's a there's a really creepy shot where Gerardi is like on the floor trying to scooch back as the Borg Queen appears to be like scooching forward. Cr- <laughs> but she looks like she's like crawling across yeah. the floor. Like it looks really almost um like really Scott's alien esque, yeah. like just like coming around the uh, console, looking really creepy. Mm-hmm. I'm digging that. Um, I am too, man. I'm very interested in what Guinan has to say, where she says, "You know, what you seek is not the stars; it never has been." Mm-hmm. Right. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. There, I I keep going back to TNG. There is this statement that you know, there's this implication that. Picard is going to go and do things that he he's never could have imagined and that he has a, a greater destiny than just being a starship captain, essentially. So, and it, that was tied with Q and Guinan. So I don't, hmm. man, <clears throat> and I love that Q and Guinan are in the same season again, because I'm like, yeah, there's all this stuff about their history that we never got the story on. And I, yeah, for sure. Man, I hope they give us the story. <laughs> I know it, man. So, I know it. so many lost plot threads from TNG. They just ignored. Um, yeah. I, and that, that is one that's... And they, they're there together. Hopefully, we actually get a scene with them together. Or some explanation, at least. Mm-hmm. As to their, like, origins or their past or their history or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be re- super rad. So I'm just really happy it looks like a lot more than just a Star Trek four time travel season. Yeah, yeah. This this trailer's got me a lot more excited than the last trailer did. Yeah, the last trailer was seemed to be relying heavily upon that trope, and I just mm-hmm. don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea of the idea of doing that same Star Trek four thing again bored me mm-hmm. but the idea of doing that combined with this like i don't know some idea of like there being a it looks like maybe an over militaristic society mm-hmm. um that sounds pretty interesting and then the idea like like the, he he wakes up and he looks up and it looks like the earth is covered with these hexagonal force fields um it looks like they're maybe turned to sort of a protectionism mm-hmm. and then like Guinan being involved makes it more interesting the board queen being involved makes it more interesting mm-hmm. um like just all these sorts of uh things that are in this trailer that we hadn't seen before are making this whole thing look seem a lot more uh 
like oh, there's a lot more going on here and mm-hmm. it seems a lot more tied in with i mean the board queen picard brent spiner returning um you know getting getting to meet the ancestor of, of Sung, like the, all of that combined it seems like a lot more a lot more essential elements of the picard story are in this trailer mm-hmm. um, than just like hey let's do this star trek 4 thing again <laughs> yep yep or even the you know what was it i can't even remember the name of the episode the voyager episode where they go back to 96 <laughs> yeah 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 they, they've done it a number of times we, we've discussed it but yeah like mm-hmm. they, they seem like they're always doing that <laughs> i mean it and i think it, it's ba- it seems based on the idea that like that's one of the most classic episodes is city on the edge of forever which is the same the same thing, you know. It's not it, like City on the Edge of Forever. They went back to like the Depression era, not the '60s. Um, no, no, yeah, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the the idea that you see, oh, the future has changed. We have to go back. I'm talking about the plot yeah. line, not the not okay. the exact going back to the time. Sorry, but yes, you're right. They do that as well. In my head, it it makes it vastly different because, which I guess it is because it is the same because City on the Edge of Forever was literally the Andy Griffith uh, sets. So they could just use something from their time without worrying about it. But to me, it just feels like, you know, Star Trek four, they went back to the sixties because that's easy, you know, like, sure, sure. They sure, always sure. go back to the time frame that we're from. So they don't have to worry about changing the locations. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I get and, that. I, I'm, I'm more talking about, so there's, there's a, there's a couple of plot lines that, and it's actually, yeah, I know when, what you mean w- though. When this plot line got old to me was Heroes. You remember the show Heroes? Mm-hmm. And this is not exactly the same Sadly, thing, but it's, yes. so, it's so close to the same thing that it's always bothered me. Um, Heroes, every season, they did it in the first season, and it was like, oh, interesting hook for the first season. They showed a flash of the future. And it was like a desolate wasteland. Mm-hmm. And the entire season is them trying to change that future. Let, let me then, let me tell you what I do remember, uh, like how much I remember Heroes. Two nights ago, I'm at Walmart looking for a certain kind of crouton. Mm-hmm. And when I, I couldn't find it. And then I, I was moving around bags and I found one bag. And when I saw it, I grabbed it and went, Yatta! <laughs> Uh, oh, hero. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> well, so there's that. So, so that's what I mean. Like that, that plot line that heroes did over and over. They, they did it in first season. It seemed like it was yeah. like, hey, this is interesting, intriguing. Then they continued to do it in season two and season three, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it was just like, okay, this. And then I uh, started the show Runaways and Runaways does the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's just like, God, come on. Every, I, I really just get tired of that. Like, we need stakes. So, what are stakes? Let's show the world destroyed mm-hmm. and then have to have backtrack and figure out what happened. Like, I just, I, I get really tired of it. So, so that's, that, that's what I'm talking about when I say the same plot line. This is that, that plot line, which yep. is the same as all those other Star Trek episodes we mentioned. Um, one thing from the trailer here that, I don't know what's going on. And then it's, it's, it's probably the quickest thing in the trailer at one thirty-seven. There's a dude behind Picard with white eyes. Mm-hmm. He has a, he has a large forehead, almost looks Klingon esque to me, hmm. but I don't think he's a Klingon. He just kind of, he kind of has that look to him. Yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to pull it back up. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's it's a super fast shot. I I noticed it on the, like the third watch here. Um, and so I had to f- freeze frame it and look back. But uh, yeah, you what is this? One thirty seven. One thirty seven. Let's look at that. I had to like slow it down to to pause it right because it's so fast. Oh yeah, what is that guy? Right. Yeah, he happens so fast in the trailer. I could, I didn't see him uh, when I watched it the first couple times. Uh. Yeah, some some guy with completely white eyes, no pupils, smooth head. Yeah, smooth. His forehead's so tall. I thought it was a uh, Klingon for a second, um, but you're right. Probably not a Klingon. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. He's a creepy looking bastard. Yeah. Really creepy looking. So yeah, there's there's a lot going on here. We don't even know yet. Maybe he's this timeline's Picard. <laughs> you did say smooth head. Yeah. 
Yeah, what is what is the deal with this timeline? Like you went to a more like fate explanation for Guinan saying the thing about how your fate was never in the stars or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or what you look, what you seek, or whatever. She's or what saying. you seek is not in the stars. That made me think of the episode directly after Best of Both Worlds when he comes home. Yeah, because that whole episode is is all about him and his brother talking about like who they wanted to be when they were children. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of what you're looking for. And he's always been looking for sort of a family and a place. And he's never really fit in anywhere because even on the Enterprise, while he, he was really definitely doing what he's supposed to be doing, being the captain of the Enterprise, it's still like he never found a family until that very end, you know, mm-hmm. very end of that se- season. He's like just trying to reach out and make ma- make his family happen, you know. Um, so it's interesting to me. Uh, the idea that he always thought that his answers were in the stars is like, you know, the things he saw were in the stars, even in that, in that episode after best of both worlds, even after he's, you know, had the worst experience of his life uh, being turned into a Borg. He's still like, you know, that's my home up there, you know, mm-hmm. the, given that idea of him as the child who was always looking up the stars and that's what he was going to go do. And that's what he always dreamed of. Like, your answers aren't in the stars makes is an interesting twist on that. Like, is his answer back on earth? I don't know. Or is his, what he's looking for back on earth? I think, <clears throat> I think Picard's, I think, uh, the appropriate, uh, conclusion would be that the answers aren't out there is in here inside the, like he's inside of himself is, is, is more of an, uh, a personal journey, not a, you know, an external adventure as much as it, as it is, you know, some sort of deep philosophical bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's how they'd put it. The, the creators of the show would put it. No. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no. I mean, the guy sits around drinking tea all day and contemplating shit. I mean, we, we know where his adventure is. <laughs> Your adventure is in the Earl Grey, sir. He has he has to explore the space inside. Gosh, <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> Let's stay away from all stay away from all the jokes there. Uh, mm. <laughs> March third. That's super soon, man. That's gonna be what a great what a great month for TV. I'm so excited. Yes. Wait, I mean, I we just got so we're just got like a wealth of stuff this year. Hmm. Uh, Peacemaker's killing it right now. And then we've got... Uh, it is very March, good. So, so good. Uh, and then March 3rd, we've got Picard Season 2. And then March 30th, we've got Moon Knight. Like, man, just what a what a year for television. What a what a three-month period for television. <laughs> yep. We're uh, going to have I'm Strange promised. New Worlds pretty soon. Uh, oh, yeah. We're going to have more Lower Decks. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be a busy year. Busy year for the podcastings. Mm-hmm. 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 Get some pork cracklins and do some podcasting. Uh, uh, <laughs> those things don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. There's two sides of me, but I'm sorry, Dave. I need both. Mm. I need the pork crackling side and the podcasting side. <laughs> one is good, one is evil. <laughs> but <laughs> Actually, you know, pork cracklins. High in protein. They are, yeah, actually. Low in carbs. Like, they're really not bad. They're pretty filling for the number of calories. Yeah, they're actually, if you're on like a low carb diet, they're a pretty good snack to be. They're one of the only things you can eat in a uh, in a gas station or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't like them. I, I'm just joking. I don't know. You said podcastings, and it reminded me of the phrase of the of pork crackling for some reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I actually don't, I actually don't like them. But uh, they, when I was on a, when I've been on certain diets, I have definitely utilized them as a protein source. Yeah. Because yeah. they're way less carbs than the beef jerky and stuff. Yeah, you'll lose weight fast snacking on friggin' pork rats, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the, any other thoughts about the Picard trailer before we move on to talk about the Prodigy? Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, so far, I'm kind of feeling like crystal ball is not really going to be utilized too much here, but, uh, we'll see. Wait, who's crystal ball. Is that 
That's the captain of the Lost Arena. Yeah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't even seen Rafi. Was she not in the trailer? I didn't see her. Okay. I th- okay. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to go back and look. Um. Yeah, she definitely wasn't. It. it seems like it's really focusing down on Picard, mm-hmm. Gerardi. I, I feel like it used uh, the captain a good bit in the trailer. We saw but, uh, him, you know, fighting some people. Yeah, we saw him fighting some people. We saw him on the ship multiple times, uh, flying the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I, th- I feel like he was in it a good bit. Gerardi was in it a good bit. Seven was in it a lot. But yeah, you're right. Rafi uh, was not shown much, which makes me wonder, like, is something up with Rafi that they're not revealing yet or something like and, that? Um, yeah, I'm wondering if it ties into the No Man's Land thing. The um, Did you, I don't know if you listened to the episode where I just kind of gave some news, but... They, they're releasing an audio uh, adventure that's got Jerry Ryan and Michelle Hurd in it. And mm. it's uh, it's about Seven and Rafi and a Fenris Rangers adventure kind of thing. It's an audio thing. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. people who listen to this like audio, so mm-hmm. check it out. I, I have not listened to that episode yet, so yeah, I, I, that's cool. I'm going to check it out. Bastard. I'm sorry. I actually <laughs> didn't know you dropped it. You mentioned you might do one, but I, I didn't know you dropped it yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Davey. <laughs> no, I'm betrayed. <laughs> it hurts my heart hole. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, uh, we're going to move on to Prodigy now? Does that sound mm-hmm. good? Yeah, man. So, guys, if if you're listening to this for the Picard trailer and you have not checked out Prodigy yet, Star Trek Prodigy is the new animated series from Nickelodeon, also on Paramount+. Plus. It is some of the best... It's probably the best first season of Star Trek I've ever seen. I, I honestly think it's the best Star Trek that has come out in this new era. I think it's consistently the best thing. I, I agree with that. Um... I do. I really do. I think it's the best thing so far. Uh, it is obviously not going to be everyone's taste. Some people have uh, a bent against uh, animation. I-, I have a harder time connecting with animation. And it is definitely uh, intended for an audience, a younger audience. But it's really freaking good. And it like, um, yeah. It, it has everything I need as an adult to really enjoy it. Um, there's nothing uh, there. There's, there's like interesting moral questions. There's a great adventure. There's really funny stuff, like actually funny stuff. That's funny to me, not just funny to kids. So if you have been, if you've been avoiding it, cause it's kind of like a kid's show, don't go check it out. It's so freaking good. We've been doing it. We've been covering it every week. Um, and it is, it's really been one of the most fun shows. It's so good. Yeah. And it's it's got like real emotional stakes. Oh yeah, for sure. And, mm. and this episode we're about to talk about, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm impressed they went where they went uh, mm-hmm. for the emotional stakes, like some really um, intriguing emotional stuff. I'm very pleased, by the way, that it doesn't feel like they are dumbing anything down for kids. Me too. Me too. And that that's so so important because I I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of my being raised and understanding of the world came from watching or the universe came from watching Star Trek and shows like it um, mm-hmm. that sort of explore these concepts. And uh, yeah, this one's uh, yeah, this one's really really good. It's finally doing that thing where it's it doesn't doesn't feel like it's separating it to the point that like adults and kids can't enjoy it mm-hmm. and kids can actually learn and grow. Like it always has a moral, but it's not like a campy moral <laughs> like it's yeah. really well done like um it's made me want to cry multiple times it's so freaking good yep and this episode was no exception this episode definitely made me cry so this episode is called time amok uh, i should mm-hmm. also mention this uh the show also makes tons of great references to older star trek that if you're an older star trek fan you'll love it you just love it it's great but, but not in a ham-fisted way that makes you go Ugh. <laughs> it's not like I a mean, lower deck situation. Like I love lower right. decks, but they they are just very on the nose with it. Sometimes it's on the nose. I mean, there was the, <laughs> like it, it, if you haven't listened to anything else we've talked about uh, on this stuff, there is an episode. There's a great episode, not to spoil, but I guess spoiler alert. There's a great episode where they actually get on the uh, holodeck and have a like adventure with old crew members, and it's 
and it uses old archive audio archive yeah. audio yeah it's it's super fun super yeah. fun. so it's really it should get a lot for the star trek <coughs> fan on top of being great for kids um and everybody but uh yeah this episode is is called time amok and it is an episode where uh, there's a problem on the ship. They're going near a tachyon storm, which you know what tachyons well, mean. Yeah, they they are <laughs> honoring the old uh, tradition, the Star Trek tradition of flying your ship directly into a dangerous nebula, even though you've got three dimensional space to go around it. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta take the shortcuts. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they go to this tachyon storm, and it causes the ship to be separated, and each person is existing on the ship, but in a time... They're all time displaced, and time is running at different speeds for each of them. Mm -hmm. And Jane, the Janeway hologram has to bounce between the different characters and and try to help them to fix the ship and like teach them the importance of working together uh while not being together. Mhm. Mm and the the sadness of being alone which is the I mean the bearing the lead here but the thing that really kills me is Rock spends a long time by herself. Yeah, I I was in search of trying to find, you know, I was in, I was in search of the the number, the actual number of years that she was stuck by herself. And uh the general consensus seems to be based on Jankum Pog's timeline and the way his time was moving. If you invert it, then that means Rock was alone for 6 to 10 years. Cuz there are some numbers on a screen well, mm -hmm. while Janeway's talking, so some some nerdier Star Trek fans who are much smarter than me <laughs> started tabulating. But remember, poor little uh, little squelpy thing. What is what is he called? Uh, Murph. <laughs> Murph. He was he was longer. He was alone for yes. longer. Yeah, I thought about that, um, which is crazy. But I guess Murph is just a Murph and it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is kind of the implication of this episode. I don't know. Dude's resilient. Yeah. Murph seems very resilient. Yeah. I actually got really sad for Murph when I realized that. I was like, oh man, I was sad for Rock, but Murph was even longer. Yeah. Poor Murph. That, that great scene. It was sad, but it was also really funny when, when Janeway time displaces to the longest. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> she's like okay where's the member of the uh smurf and he's like vomiting up a piece of equipment and she's like uh. <laughs> well i guess the good thing is they didn't show it but i guess the implication is janeway might have stayed with him a long time yeah maybe so but like yeah. he, he, could, he couldn't do anything to help her but like maybe she didn't leave him alone the only reason uh rock is left alone is because rock turns off the janeway hologram mm -hmm. well no Rock would have been the longer one because she goes to Rock first. Does she? I thought she went to Jank and Pog first. No, no. She goes to Jank and Pog, then Rock, then someone else who happens really fast. Zero, right? Yeah, zero. She goes to Jank and Pog first, then, then uh, <laughs> zero who happens. No. Is she because because uh, Murph definitely happens after Zero because Zero is the one that gives gives her the schematics. Oh, okay. And then and then she sees Murph and then jumps to, uh, yeah. I have to yeah. look at that diagram again because that it's now I'm a little confused because now it seems like because Jenkin Pog and Zero both happen very fast, mm -hmm. but they say they alternate, so that doesn't really make sense. Oh no no no! That's what it is. It's Jenkin Pog then Rock. Then zero, then Murph. Mm hmm. I think so. And then um, Gwen, then Doll, then back to Rock. Okay. And I guess Doll's just hanging out is why his. It, he's also closest to normal time. He's getting closest back to normal time. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a really fun episode, man. Like, it's imaginative, it's cool. I, I don't. I, six to ten years seems like possible, but that seems also insane to put the character through that. Well, I mean, you know, she did say that she was 
more mature, but she hasn't aged, and she mm-hmm. did master several things, like taught exactly, herself yeah. different maths and stuff. Yeah, she learned like astral physics and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, this was like an exercise in the writers saying, "Okay, we've reached a point with Rock where this is no, this is going to start getting annoying and not cute." We need to d- change this up and make her a more confident character. Also, if she was, you know, alone for six to ten years, that would effectively, maturity level wise, uh, age her up with the rest of the crew. Mm. She, she seemed a little, quite a bit younger than the rest of them mentally. So, yeah, I guess that's true. And, and a lot of this was also her pushing back on the idea that she, they, they were. They, they, even though in the very first episode, Doll looks at her and thinks she's like a lumbering beast, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and we all assume that. And then when we hear her voice, we go, oh, no, no, she's just a little girl in a huge body. But they continue to call her the security officer. Mm-hmm. And it's just because she's big. She's just, and she doesn't want to be um, pigeonholed right. into this thing that she doesn't really want to be. And now it looks like she's a science officer. <laughs> Yeah, 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 which is great. I love it. I guess because it's an extension of that that moment in the first episode when you realize she's a little girl, mm-hmm. even though Doll realizes she's not a little, she's not this lumbering beast. He still thinks of her as like it's just it's just a great extension of that and shows like I don't know how long it can take to to let something sink in like that. By the way, I did pay attention this week, and they it was it's Dal, like Mal, like Mal Reynolds, Dal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I've been wondering right. every week when we're trying to say it. I'm like, ah, God, I didn't pay attention again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have sworn it was, it was doll, but yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder, how is it spelled? Is it D-A-H-L? I thought it was D-A-H-L. It's D-A-L. Oh, okay. Again, like Mal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why I thought doll then, if that's how they're saying it. Cool. Probably because of that, like, Raul Dahl guy. Maybe. Maybe so. Um, we also get a little attack from the Diviner this episode, which is sort of a uh, departure from the rest of the plot line, because it only affects Gwen's timeline only. Appropriately. Absolutely. It was creepy hearing Chakotay's voice coming out of Dead Knock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people on my timeline going like, Oh my God, Chakotay is is Dread Doc, and he's he was transformed into the robot creature. I'm like, guys, <laughs> guys, haven't you <sighs> seen the Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> like, Data also spoke with Picard's voice. That doesn't mean that. I mean, what kind of now he is, but uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. he, Picard did become Data in the end. Mm-hmm. Mm. See, see, all those people were right. Data was Picard all along. Yep. <laughs> I just, I just <gasps> proved myself wrong. I guess yep. I've got to go walk away and find a potato peeler to take to my dick. Oh gosh, it's part of my punishment, Matt. All right. <laughs> well. I'm 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 sitting here as we talk and walk watching this episode in the background and uh just this it's just so sad. Just the the it there's just so much like heartbreak watching Rock be alone. Um and she's like talking to all the crew members that aren't there. She's cuddling with a Murph doll that she's made for herself. Mm-hmm. Um she's watching the hollow recording of their holodeck adventure from the beginning of the episode. Uh, it's just heartbreaking, just utterly heartbreaking. Um and then she comes back to the crew and she's just like taught herself all of this stuff and has solved the problem that she needed to solve. So good. Yeah. So good, man. Uh. Which I, I, I wonder how it works because like in the beginning of the episode and we saw rock, like her covers, everything was moving super slowly because time was moving mm-hmm. slower. So, but in the holodeck, it looked like everything was running normally. Well, at one point, Janeway says specifically that she can adapt the speed of. She says that she can adapt her speed to talk to them. Mm. 
So I would assume that that works the same way on the holodeck. She's probably okay. like increased speed of the holodeck to match whatever. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I, uh, I failed again. <laughs> he says it to zero. She says something like, luckily, my matrix, my hollow matrix has adapted to act at your speed mm. so that I can speak to each of you or whatever. But yeah, I'm also thinking like that means that as uh, as Rock is trying to fix Janeway's uh, program and doing anything in the computer, she's also like basically the Flash. <laughs> Because she does seem to be moving normally, so it just it seems like she's probably going super fast. Right. Yes. So the rock rock is the flash, and so like, but it is weird because they seem to not mm-hmm. be able to see each other or interact with each other. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that, they're just so out of phase, I guess, or whatever. I mean, you know, it's it's a con- there's a lot of convenience here. They don't really fully explain because if they were moving very slowly and they're all in the same ship, Rock should still actually be able to see them moving. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? She should be like speeding by as they're just like slowly moving through the hallway or whatever. I, I'm not smart enough to figure out um, what's going on. I don't quite understand <laughs> because I would think that everyone else, if everyone else was moving faster than rock, then she wouldn't even see them period. Like it would seem to me like she would not even be able to perceive them. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, no, you're right. I was thinking of it backwards. See there. there okay. No, 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 wait, wait, no, they, cause she's moving super fast. Her world is going super slow, which means yeah. like if, if she saw a doll, they would be moving around her very slowly. If, uh, but it, they, they just decided oh. to make that decision because like, say it takes, you know, 10 minutes for you to walk across the ship, but it takes her six years. She would be like seeing you first tick for six years, taking that one walk down the hallway. Yeah. But uh, they just chose to like make it so that they don't, they're not interacting at all. They can't see each other. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, he was pretty much just in his room the whole time. Right, but I'm assuming she would, if she's there for six years, she's probably explored the whole ship and done all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's about all i got to say about that. What do you got? Anything else for that episode of Prodigy? I, I don't think so. They did. I thought it was interesting that they did... Um, Say that the uh, the start date was six zero seven one two five point six, and they said that they uh, gave the start date an unusual number as a hint that time was being distorted. Like Janeway's temporal settings were already being affected by the approaching tachyon storm. Interesting. Okay. Also, have we gotten start dates before on this show? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just curious because have they standardized those? I know at some different points in Star Trek they're they're used differently and not always uh, consistently. I'm one of the fans that pays attention to how many dorsal fins are on the nacelles. I don't know about star dates. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, wrong, wrong type of fan. If you're a star date fan, uh, reach out and let us know what the, what the star dates mean. Uh, I, I think I think they've uh, you know fix the start dates now so they are there is supposedly the new ones are are proper for whatever that means um there so if they've used start dates other than this one so it'd be funny if this is the only one they used to start date and then they were like yeah but it's a weird start date because it's a tachyon storm you know like mm-hmm. the fans that are paying attention might be like um oh we can finally figure out w- when this show occurs and then mm-hmm. nope you can't you're in a tachyon storm sorry yeah She's on the fritz. <laughs> what's that? What's that Rhett and Link commercial where it's like, it's a, it's a bear. Nope. Just so-and-so. It was like, there's a, he, they used to do good. Brett and Link used to do commercials, local mm-hmm. commercials for different people. And there's this, I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like for a guy who was a taxidermist. <laughs> and it would be people like <laughs> reacting to a horrible bear or a hawk or something. They're like, it's a hawk. And then it would just be like him holding like a taxidermied hawk. And he's like, nope, it's just so-and-so. He's just like hiding behind a tree with like a stuffed hawk. I don't know. That's weird. I like it. Something you said reminded me of that. 
<laughs> I literally oh. don't even remember. When you, oh, when you were like, nope, she's on the fritz. <laughs> I got you. That's what it was. Sorry. Uh, no, Weird no, aside. No. Weird, Weird aside. aside. I didn't know they did that. That's fun. Red and Linker. Red and Linker pretty funny. I uh, they're not exactly my kind of humor, but I but like mm-hmm. I respect their uh, I respect the kind of content creators they are. I've I listen to their podcast a good bit, and it's just kind of interesting. It's so interesting listening to the the kinds of content creators that are out in the world now. It's just so weird because someone can be like so very famous, but also have such a normal life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like you make all your own stuff in your own house and your own, like here in written link talk, they're just like talking about going to you know, dinner with their families. And it just it seemed like pretty normal dudes. Yeah. But they're also like trying to get make a movie happen or like whatever that week, you know? No, um, it's, it's real. It's real fun. I think my, my favorite commercial of theirs local commercial that they did was the red house commercial where it, it was born out of the fact that they were like talking to the owner about, Oh, so what's your furniture about your furniture uh business what, what's the point and well it's a good place to to uh shop for a, a white person oh gosh or a black person that's what the guy said he's like it's a good place to shop for a white person or a black person and they just thought that was hilarious that that's where his mind went so that's the whole commercial whereas like you know, uh, like a white guy would be like, this comforter would, or th- this, uh, this bed would be perfect for a white person. And then like a black guy walks up, goes, or oh, a black person. Oh, wow. And then it like cuts to them singing at the red house where white people and black people buy furniture. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very funny <laughs> way to interpret it in the end. But the way the, the way you initially read it sounded like the guy, like, changed his mind he's like it's a great place to buy furniture for white people i mean also black people <laughs> so like this is- <laughs> it's just so yeah it's real weird I don't- it's really really strange that is a very funny the the end end result is very funny though yeah. um all right man well thanks for joining us guys we're star trek universe uh we'll be back here very soon with more star trek episodes prodigy is about to wrap up for the second hat second third of the season right or something like that <laughs> it's run of five episodes is almost over whatever it is yeah yeah it's weirdly they're sprinkling it throughout the whole year which is kind of cool like if i were a kid i'd be enjoying that sort of like mm-hmm. yeah it's something to look forward to it's cool yeah um but uh and then we got picard coming in march 3rd man Woo! that's like so so freaking soon we'll be back peace joel on true and live long and prosper you know this whole double episode thing about two episodes messed me up joel on true and live long and prosper Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. <laughs>